Thank you. Thank you very much, Denise. And then I'm really, really happy to join this uh, meeting and then sharing my experience as a quantum physicist and programmer. I'm Mia Murao. I'm uh, uh, working at the uh, physics department of the University of Tokyo in Japan. So who am I? And then um, I am a quantum physicist and also I, I think I'm a quantum programmer. And I'm a theorist, so I'm not making any uh, quantum, real quantum computer, but I'm, I'm all work in the theory. And then I'm working at the University of Tokyo, Japan. So uh, my research area is quantum algorithm, quantum programming, and also foundation, understanding the foundation of quantum mechanics. So here is my... Um, uh, group uh, photo and then and this I usually use pen and paper and then this my office desk is this lots of um, computers so and then I'm uh, also I'm a wife of a British businessman and I'm a mother of a 19 years old son and I'm also uh, currently working a council member of Association of Asia Pacific Physical Societies so, um, yeah, and then maybe something very um, special people would think I'm uh, different from other is when maybe uh, that is I am the first female physics professor at the University of Tokyo uh, in the history. And then I'm, when I started as the associate professor in physics, I was the first female associate professor in this uh, department of physics in University of Tokyo. Uh, in 2001, and then it took for a while. The second one was hired in the department in 2016. So in general, the female ratio is about like 6% of the members of physical society in Japan. So um, not many female professor in science in my generation in Japan yet, and then not many role model for female scientists. So um, something wonder why I'm such a rare species in here. And then maybe the um, principle that drove me this career, despite the lack of precedence, is um, I think um, the, the following this, um, don't be afraid of trial and error, but we do challenge. So, um, I'm actually, I don't know how old am I look like, but then I'm, I'm in physics for last 33 years. I joined the um, university um, in Japan in 1987. This is a small university, all female universities. And then and, and the end of first year, I met quantum mechanics. And since then, I have been fascinated by quantum. Uh, I have been joining master course and PhD course at the same university. This is um, not maybe typical in outside Japan or outside Asia. This We have all-female uh, university education, and you can obtain PhD from there. And then I, I uh, went to uh, US and UK for my uh, post, uh, postdoc uh, research. And then I met quantum information theory. And then I came back to Japan and my son was born and I became a professor. And then the Maria, my career going on like this. So first of all, like I have been really, really fascinated by quantum. And I think many of you as the similar way, but I really uh, like quantum because of the, for the first time, sight, the quantum looks very counterintuitive, very odd, but quantum mechanics give total logical explanation. And that really opened my kind of eyes, that learning like, a, it's somehow it feels like a, uh, I can find the truth or something that's what we can see is not necessary what it is or don't tricked by how it looks um, and this realize and check implicit assumption. We, we tend to assume a lot of things, but it may be not really ground, grounded in the nature and to find a better and a logical way for explanation. So since 1988, um, 
I have been really, really fascinated quantum and and not just understanding quantum, but I really, really want to utilize quantum for lots of things, especially information processing. OK, so it looks like my uh, history looks rather smooth. I, I kind of directly coming straightly to the um, uh, professorship or research, but actually there's a lots of lots of error, failure, trials, program to get through. For example, like um, first of all, I like uh, before meeting quantum, I, I regretted to join physics department, or in after master courses, I failed to get the nice job I wanted to take in the industry, didn't get. Or I tried to go to Germany for my postdoc, uh, sorry, PhD, but I didn't get the fellowship or lots of failure. And I'm very impressed, uh, depressed in, in Harvard when I had the first postdoc and then the second postdoc when I arrived in Perry College, there's nothing work, there are lots of problems. And after being an associate professor handling newborn baby and a new job, it's have a lot of problems. Um, but um, um, there, there's a lots of problem, and, and maybe people, successful people, didn't talk much about the failure or error or problem. But actually, behind it, a lots of error and problem. And then I really want to encourage you that some the you can go through by challenge. And so the, as an example, maybe I would like to show them my briefly tell the test case as a test case. That's my days in Imperial College, London in 1997 to 1999 and when I was postdoc. So in 1996, I joined uh, in, as Imperial College, London, this quantum optics group um, uh, as a postdoc. And this was the picture when I joined and in those days um, uh, the group of professors are Peter Knight group. It's a very international group, um, lots of people coming all the different countries. We really enjoy this, um, this the ex excellent um, uh, the research. So I started well in London when I just started my postdoc, just getting married and then this summer in London is beautiful. Uh, and the new project going okay, and then okay, and very fun. But when winter comes, somehow the new project doesn't work well, and my husband is working, have to work in away from home for month. And in winter, some um, like a bath. This this was kind of terrible. The ba bathroom water in our flat leaked to downstairs, and then this at the middle of night, this downstairs guy banging my door, and then the water leak, called the plumber or something. I I even know the word plumber in um, uh, in those days, kind of thing, and they figure out this how to stop this water, or like uh, lots of lots of problems. And this, this dark and low sky of London is so depressing and really, uh, I, I was really depressed. So the breakthrough was happened in this uh, Christmas party and I, at the end of 1996. Um, and I mentioned my this very miserable situation to a postdoc who was leaving the group soon later. And he, he, he was very nice and told my situation to other colleagues and who actually who has been started working on quantum information in our group. And these are the people who in those states that are still postdoc and student, but now are big professor, Professor Plenio and, and in, at Ulm and the Professor Vedral at Oxford. So they asked me this uh, Professor Plenio and now, and the Professor Vedra now, they, they asked me to join the project on the multi-party entanglement, and I jumped in research in quantum information. And this is the time the door to quantum information was open. So I, I, I think it's very good to not just hold the problem by yourself, but really consult others, talking to others of the problem. There would be some good way to get the the get through, the door for the get through would be happening. 
And then in there, uh, we had uh, invented this telecloning. Uh, that was, in those days, this multipartite entanglement is not well understood and then not very good to use was not known. And the methodology was not totally established as there's no textbook like as we have now. So we work trial and error and then finding a protocol to obtain this optimal clones of the quantum information uh, using this multipartite entangled state. So it's turned out to be the one of the world's first protocol to use multipartite entanglement for a resource of quantum computation. Um, so this result would open up my career, I think, uh, to be the, uh, the toward this professorship. So it's 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 a little it's sort of accident I get into maybe quantum information. If I'm not uh, depressed and then I was doing well in this quantum optics, maybe I maybe still stay in quantum optics. Um, but if things not going well, and then maybe you can figure out different direction um, with with your colleague, and then this that was I think is very important. And later, this um, telecloning has been realized, and I, I there is a, some newspaper article we have uh, have this, this yeah. Anyway, so that was uh, uh, my days in the 1990s, and then. Now in 2020, what I'm doing now. So I'm still working as a quantum physicist slash programmer. And then, so the, maybe it is not directly connected to the business in very short time, but um, I'm considering and researching the world where fully fault tolerant quantum computers are viable and then what we can do. At the same time as a physicist, I'm interested in why and how the quantum mechanics can power up quantum uh, power up information processing so this is is something we wanted to know quantum better and then and the end and is as a basic science and also at the same time i would like to know the good use of this uh, curious and then counter into inter encounter uh, uh, this uh, this odd nature of quantum mechanics. So this would be our, um, and then this is really the very nice thing with the quantum is these two sides are really, really close to each other. And then I, I like to do something very uh, non-conventional, different thing from others. And then what we are trying to do now here is uh, we are trying to figuring out this functional quantum programming can be possible or not. So we try to consider quantum computer is not just a, um, calculating classical program or classical state uh, processor, but we want to use combine quantum system with, with quantum computer to make quantum process processor. So as this direction of the research, we are trying to uh, make a new algorithm uh, useful for this quantum process processor. Uh, and then another interesting thing I'm thinking uh, as a physicist is this distributed quantum information processing. Um, and this is quite interesting to learn about this. The computation is how we can understand the world of uh, causality and time and space, how related, how parallelizability, entanglement, uh, causal structure would matter in quantum. Okay. Finally, I would like to um, have small, some messages for the young uh, colleagues and through my experience. I really, really think that some um, challenge is very important in respect. Don't worry uh, about this trial error. And an important thing I, I think is that this, please do not limit yourself for your preconception conception like uh, or like in Asia it's lots of preconception or the the common common sense for women but um, this is really not really common sense and then believe your your instinct and the word is open for you and in that 
case, we always need to seek the more um, what is more essential, and it would be always nice to be unique and original. And again, this don't be afraid of trial, uh, trial and error. Even you got error or fail, you can try again. So, and then think enough to convince at least yourself uh, for everything you want to worry. And then, and also, it will be really, really nice this, um, uh, the, to the other people and help each other and help the uh, next generations. So I really, really would like to uh, see your, uh, meet you as a colleague in the future for this developing quantum technology and science. So thank you very much for your attention.